You're gonna have to get a giant crate of markers. What a waste of energy. Kind of like Fusion is now. It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if you tried to print Wikipedia? That's definitely gonna jam. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. This question comes from Suzanne, who asks, if you had a printed version of the whole of Wikipedia, how many printers would you need in order to keep up with the changes made to the live version? So something that's constantly changing. Why? So not only is it large, but it's constantly changing and evolving. You might as well ask the crew of Chernobyl the night they decided to go prompt critical and blow the lid off. Take a picture of each neutron. Because Wikipedia by itself, like much stuff you see online, all the changes, all the new additions, might as well be an out of control chain reaction. For the English Wikipedia, you'd need this many. <laughs> Six printers is surprisingly few, but before you try to create a live up- How good are these printers? Are they gonna jam? Dating paper version of Wikipedia, let's look at what those printers would be doing and how much they'd cost. People have considered printing out Wikipedia before. In 2012, Rob Matthews printed every featured article, creating a book a couple feet thick, and in- I'm just trying to understand why. Because it's a continuously updated thing on something that isn't. So by the time you look at it, it's old. Then again, people use newspapers for a very long time, so I'm happy to be proven wrong. 2015, Michael Mandeberg created an art installation to show the scope of Wikipedia by printing around 1% of its articles, <laughs> although without images. Without the entire images encyclopedia like would be a lot bigger. Wikipedia user Tom PW has set up a- How much are you going to spend on toner and color and- getting the print cartridges align and printing all the test pages only for it to give you more error message. I haven't had the best luck with printers. Wikipedia page that calculates the current size of the whole English Wikipedia without images in printed volumes. It would currently fill a lot of bookshelves, but most libraries have far more books. Keeping up with the edits would be harder. English Wikipedia currently receives about 150,000 edits each day or 100 per minute. We could try to define a way to measure the word count of the average edit, but that's hard bordering on impossible, and fortunately, we don't need to. We can just estimate that each change is going to require us to reprint a page somewhere. Now, many edits will actually change multiple pages, but many other edits are reverts, which would let us put back pages that we've already printed. So one page per edit seems like a reasonable middle ground. I'm just thinking tracking and organizing this. I mean, yeah, it can be done. It's just kind of a pain. For a mix of photos, tables, and text typical of Wikipedia, a good inkjet printer might put out 15 pages per minute. This means you'd only need about six printers running at any given time to keep pace with the roughly 100 edits each minute. The paper would stack up quickly. Using Rob Matthews' book as a starting point, I did my own back-of-the-envelope estimate for the size of the current English Wikipedia, and based on the average length of featured articles versus all articles, I came up with an estimate of 300 cubic meters for a printout of the whole thing. By comparison, if you were trying to keep up with the edits, yeah, and having someone try to run in and thumb them and go through all the pages and try to find the exact one while it's continuously going. What a job. You'd be printing out 300 cubic meters every month. Six. You'd also, the people who are placing them in there, this would require round the clock shift rotation and it would even be constant. Like in nuclear power, we worked. 12 and a half hour shifts. I mean, they were officially 12, but the extra 30 minutes was turnover time, so you can discuss with the crew that you're relieving what they accomplished, what they didn't get accomplished, and discuss what the priorities for the next shift are. You should already have some idea anyway of what you're walking into, but you never know. There's th occasionally things could happen that could surprise you. And sometimes it takes a lot longer than just 30 minutes if something happens. But the point is, it would require round the clock work. Printers isn't that many, but they'd be running all the time and that gets expensive. The electricity to run them would be cheap, a few dollars a day. If you have six going though, if this operation were like a nuclear power plant, at least the plant I worked at, you'd actually have 18. In case one of the printers was broke, you're going to need back out ones to switch in while you repair the printer, replace the printer, reload the ink cartridge, do whatever. And I say 18 because there were three safety system trains at the nuclear power plant that I worked at. A lot of them only have two, but mine had extra redundancy built into it. And by train, I mean one of those systems by itself 
could do everything you need to safely shut down the reactor in the event of a nuclear accident. And by systems, I'm referring to high pressure and high volume emergency core cooling pumps to uh, pump water over the reactor to ensure the fuel does not melt in the event a major accident occurs. Support systems, emergency backup diesels if you lose offsite power. Critical auxiliary cooling systems, HVAC systems, basically everything you need to keep the reactor taken care of for a long period of time after it's shut down. Obvious, I can't think of why you would need that level of redundancy for printing Wikipedia, but if it was determined to be critical infrastructure, like how some data centers are, it would have a similar-ish design philosophy. The paper would be about one cent per sheet, which means you'd be spending about $1,000 a day. You'd want to hire people to manage the printers 24-7, yeah. so depending on wages in your- Paper boy and inkologist. I've never heard of inkologist. Area, this could cost less than the paper, or much less if you can figure out a way to trick Wikipedia's volunteer editors into helping Ooh. you. Even the printers themselves wouldn't be too wow. expensive, despite the terrifyingly fast replacement cycle, but- Depending on the individual's um, agreement, overtime and night shift, they're going to be paid at a premium. And reactor operators and plant operators, well-trained, well-specialized roles, they're not cheap labor. After all, do you want them to be? The ink cartridges would be a nightmare. Various sources estimate that for a typical inkjet printer, the real-life cost of ink runs from $0.05 cents a page for black and white to around $0.10 cents a page for color. With 150,000 yep. daily page edits, that means you'd be spending about $10,000 per day on ink cartridges. So you definitely want to invest in a laser printer. Otherwise, in just a month or two, this project could end up costing you half a million dollars. And that's just assuming you just want one copy of it. I mean, what's it for? Is someone going to go ahead and read it, or is it just some archive designed to appease the cult of Wikipedia? I have no idea. But that's not even the worst part. If someday Wikipedia decides to go dark again, like they did in 2012, and you want to join the protest, you're going to have to get a giant crate of markers. What a waste of energy. Kind of like fusion is now. Energy intensive, complex, and expensive to sustain for what it's worth, which I don't know what you're getting out of having a stack of paper that's the current live version of Wikipedia. I mean, can you imagine if you came in and used this for a research project only for a lot of these paper people to constantly switch out whatever it is you happen to be looking at? But yeah, most fusion reactors, net energy consumers, that they consume more than they produce. Though there are some that are close, such as a recent experiment with a national ignition facility. Not sustained. We're just not there yet. Definitely stick to digital. Hmm. That was another silly idea, but I always appreciate these XKCD videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.